Pop 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 persuadable. What's going on, everybody? So today we are going to do the photographer guide, and let me tell you something. The photographer is one of the most dynamic characters in the game. It's very difficult to make a guide on him because you have to be able to change your gameplay at any point in time, right? So one thing that you learn in the medical field or psychology field or really anything with a foundation to it is that in school, right? You can learn the foundation, the foundational principles. Like in psychology, you learn about Sigmund Freud and Eric Erickson and Pavlov. And I can teach you the foundation of how to use the photographer, right? But we call something called clinical reasoning where we can teach you everything that you learn in a textbook. But as you go out there in the field and you become a young practitioner and you work in the field, you start to develop clinical reasoning. So for your patients, you take a combination of research a combination of the foundation you learned in college and in the foundation of your own personal experiences and you kind of amalgamate all of that to really address your patient's needs. And it's the same thing with a video game, all right? So with a photographer, I'm going to teach you the foundation. I'm going to teach you different ways to play him. I'm going to show you different personas to use. However, what you need to realize is that this is the foundation. Once you get into gameplay, you're going to have to be able to interchange these sort of tactics depending on the players that you're playing these games are never fully 100 percent smoothly always in your favor so that's really important to address in this before we really start continuing. so what we're going to do now is we're going to go over the persona build that blue race car and i use um i discussed this with blue race car i got the top 20 using photographer photographer is one of my favorite characters in the game all right and what you're going to see is that we, we have this kind of weird setup that is working against the top players in Northern America. And really what it is is that when you go to the uh, east wing, you kind of have me highlighted on that. Not only will it show you an individual highlighted when you put somebody on the rocket chair, right? But the, the skill before it actually increases your movement speed when you have people tied to the balloons about 15 percent, i believe which is substantial you're going to actually see me utilize this in gameplay that is the difference between you being able to get into the basement and not also in the photo world when you hit somebody and down them you can pick them up and you can walk around with them as you're navigating to another part of the map and i'll, I'll show you guys how to do that um, the reason why we don't really go up north is because you shouldn't really be kiting people for that long you should be using the photo world to your advantage we don't go south detention only because if you if you hit them once in the photo world you know you just hit them we call that a love tap and we move on that person is a one shot for the rest of the game so as an example if you see a coordinator in photo world and you hit them one time and you just move on when that foot when that coordinator goes in for the rescue in the real world later on all you got to do is hit them one time because of the damage distribution so we don't really work with detention too much all right What's really interesting is that if you look southwest, uh, you'll see that we go all the way down. And the reason being so is that this skill has been buffed. Um, the development team has buffed this skill. So after eight seconds of chasing somebody, you actually get an increase in movement speed so long as you're not vaulting, etc. So that is substantially impressive. Not only that, you also have your second skill that allows you to teleport back. So you don't always have to be climbing things. Now, it is true that if you use your skill, you lose the movement speed, but we've been really experimenting with this, and I really, really like this. Blue Race Car is actually the one that showed me this. I wasn't using this build. Um, that's why the photographer guide should have probably came out last week, but when this got buffed, uh, we, we really experimented a lot. He liked his results. I liked my results, so we keep this in. And then we also invest in attack recovery speed. That's going to be uh, northwest. Uh, that's going to increase our attack recovery speed. We have panic, which is right underneath that, which, in, which decreases the decoding of everybody by 3%. And in a game where the decoding happens a little bit too fast, that's extremely important. Again, there's a few ways that you can build a persona tree. Uh, if anyone says that there's one persona tree that's better, I don't think that's necessarily true. I think it's your skill set that matters. So if you're new to photographer, it may actually be better for you to go uh, east and, and down, going south, so you can, you know, Use your detention later on. Um, so if you're beginning, going east and south could work. Um, but for us, usually we don't. the games don't last that long. And if they do, we're usually killing them before. So that's why we don't go to the de uh, detention. We do invest a little bit south. 
Um, that also increases your movement speed when somebody's on the rocket chair. Some people like to build north instead to allocate their points in the doom shock. Either way, as long as you have the foundational knowledge and then you kind of change it up from there depending on your skill set and preference. All right, so let's get into the gameplay. So the first thing that you always need to do, activate photo world right away. All right, this is the most important tactic that you'll, you'll do as a photographer. And that's going to take a little bit of experience of learning where the cameras are. And this is important because it, it no matter what people do when they decode, everything will re be reduced by half when the photo world stops, right? So right now, any decoding that happens, if they don't finish the machine, it goes down by half. All right, so let's talk about the first early game method. Early game method one is knowing which cipher machines to go to to get the Terra Shock, right? So you're going to see me swing, and there's going to be uh, nobody here at all, right? Which is okay. There, some of the cipher machines are right next to the photo world. You need to get these memorized because there'll be cipher machines that you can go to that you can swing right as you're leaving and get an easy terror shock to begin the match. See, I'm going to swing right away, get a terror shock. Now, like I said, this is uh, early game method one. And so you're not really going for any love taps, which we'll get into later on. Um, you're going right to the cipher machines that are right next to the photo world. Um, there is a way to counter this if you're a survivor, and that is to periodically go into photo world yourself to make sure you're not getting a heartbeat. The problem when a survivor does that, however, is that they're not decoding right away, right? Which means that if they can't finish the cipher machine, the cipher machine's progress goes halfway, all right? Everything gets cut back in half. So you put survivors in a very difficult position here. They're either going to rush the cipher machine. You're seeing people rush the cipher machines right now, all right? That's why they're decoding. They're not checking the photo world. They want to do this to finish the cipher machine, but when they do it, it's an easy terror shock for me. Now, if they do check the photo world, so say if I'm decoding and then I get off the machine to check the photo world to see if the hunter is coming towards me, that means that the cipher machine is not being decoded as fast, which means when the photo world ends, that cipher machine's progress goes back down to halfway. All right. So you put survivors in a very difficult position. They either rush the cipher machine and risk a terror shock, or they periodically check the photo world to make sure you're not going after them for the terror shock. But when they do that, they're not decoding as fast. So you're going to see me swing and miss, right? This is how it works. You're going to look like a, you're going to feel like an idiot kind of doing this method. However, when you do connect, it's an easy terror shock and you can move on. And that's what's really nice. These big maps can be very difficult to find people. There's usually somebody always on this half of the map, either over here or the shoreline. You're going to see somebody, again, they're rushing the cipher machine. So when they rush that cipher machine, it's nice and easy for you. So if they don't play conservative, it's an easy terror shock. If they do play conservative, they're not decoding as fast. The machines will take forever to decode. That's what I like about him. So... What happens when everything doesn't go peachy like that, though, right? Well, that's what we call the love tap boo, or you can call it love tap. And love tap is you're essentially saying, all right, I already tried to hit some people. This photo world is starting to end. You can tell by the photo world's progression by the upper right corner. If you see that gray indicator on each person's name go down, that's how you can time the photo world. You, you actually know when the photo world will end. And in this situation, I can't really find anybody to, to get that uh, terror shock on. So what I do is I decide, okay, you know what, I'm, I, I'm going to hit somebody twice, all right, because I want, I want to unlock my first skill, and then I'm going to put them on a balloon, and that's only because of my persona build. Remember, I have increased movement speed with, um, with this build. So I hit them twice. I'm not really too concerned about putting them on a rocket chair, and then anyone else in my way, I'm going to only hit one time. Because if I hit them one time, they're a one shot for the rest of the game. All right, so you see how I hit that coordinator once, right? I'm not going to really waste too much more time. All right, now because I put the mechanic on the rocket chair in the beginning, now that mechanic falls down. And I'm going to emphasize uh, the importance of that. Now, some people have a different method. I guess you can call it early game tactic three where they only hit everybody one time. It is a viable strategy. So you know how I hit somebody twice, pick them up, put them on a rocket chair. Uh, the, the biggest thing is you don't want to put them on a rocket chair right next to where you're at. You already checked the area. No one's there. So that's why if you have my persona build, you can relocate to another part of the map with an increase in movement speed. So some people don't do that. They only like to do tactic one, two, and three. Um, now in this case, I'm just showing you a follow-up. Remember I hit the coordinator early game. 
Well, that's me finishing the coordinator off with one hit. So that's the love tap strength. If you can hit them one time in the photo world in the beginning of the match, they're one shot kills for the rest of the game. So it just comes down to a, a, your strategy. Now, this is me showing the importance of having my persona build. And what the reason being so is that it increases your movement speed. So I was able to easily get over here to the, uh, to the basement because of the increase in movement speed. So here... I want to start teaching about jump scares. Now, jump scares is very hard to do. I already showed you in the beginning, but this is using your skill now. So it's using your skill, and you need to swing as fast as possible. And sometimes you're going to feel like an idiot because you're swinging at nothing. You don't really know if they're always at the cypher machines. But it's important for you to really practice these jump scares. You want to hit that skill, and you just want to swing. Now, here's the next trick, okay? And it's called the rocket chair photo trick. So one of the things that you can do, right, is when, you, when you're in the real world and photo world is inactivated, if you put them on a rocket chair and then you activate the photo world, that means that that person now needs to be saved in real life, <laughs> in real time, I should say, and in the photo world. Right now, this coordinator is in both the real world and the photo world, right? So she's been rescued in both areas. But if I kill her now and put her in a rocket chair, she's going to go down when the photo world ends. Okay. So I, I, another way of saying that is that if I, if I put you down into the rocket chair and then activate photo world, if somebody only rescues the, the coordinator in real world and they don't rescue her in photo world, because she's technically on the rocket chair in photo world, when the photo world ends, she will fall down. If that makes any sense. So, and that's why it's super important. So right now they didn't rescue the uh, coordinator in photo world. They only rescued her in real world and see how she falls down. So it's a trick. Put them on the rocket chair, activate photo world. Now, if they only save her in real world and she's still in the rocket chair in photo world, she'll still go down. That's very important to do. Now, one of the things I don't want you to do Okay, and this is very situational. I don't want you to get them down, then activate photo world, then put them in the rocket chair. You don't want to do that because then they only need to be saved in the real world. So what I should do is take her, put her on the rocket chair, and then activate. This is the wrong combination. However, it's not always going to be perfect. You want that photo world to always be up. That's going to reduce the process of the game. All right. So you usually always want photo world active, but in some cases, if you finish the kill right before photo world, that's what you can do. So this is me showing it again. Right. So I knocked them down. I call it maleism because <laughs> men, we don't really get anything right. And, <laughs> and what we're going to do, right, photo world is done. You can see that I have that increase in movement speed, right? That's what's really good. Increase in movement speed when you have them on the balloons. I can put them in the basement, go upstairs, and I can activate the photo world, all right? Again, it's going to depend. Typically, you always want the photo world as active as possible because that's what's decreasing the progress of the cipher machines. And now she's going to be in both. Now we're going to show you the importance of using your second skill and really being able to teleport back and forth um, and being able to trick opponents um, using this skill, typically it's uh, you're gonna you're gonna not hold it. So the longer you hold your second skill down, the further you teleport back to your footprints. All right, and you want to use your second skill. So I'm gonna actually walk away from the rocket chair, and then I'm gonna use my second skill. I'm holding it down. Right, this is gonna help me teleport back. They think I left the rocket chair. I'm gonna teleport back using my second skill, and I'm right here. And there's different ways that you can use this. You can use this. They're trying to really finish this last machine. That's why they're rushing it. But I'm able to get them both right at the last second. So they weren't being dumb. That, that thing was at 95%. There's different ways to use this skill, right? That's me using Blink. And I'm going to use my uh, Teleport in order to really be able to uh, trick them and kill them. And that's very important in this game, whether it's for regular saves or not. So one thing that you can do is leave the rocket chair and uh and teleport back like you just saw me do and then other times you can use this for um kiting and when they try to kite you you can use it to uh, time it as a general rule of thumb usually you don't need to hold it too long in tight kiting sessions especially with your eight percent movement speed right persona web so definitely practice this trust me you could be a nightmare with this 
Again, it's not something that's always reliable, but it will take practice. And trust me, when you get this down, you are a monster. And typically, you only have to hold your finger down for a brief second, maybe two seconds, and then use it. Uh, I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. You'll get that with practice. What I want to talk about now is, again, the, uh, the advantage of my persona build. Um, and that is the ability to increase your speed when somebody is on balloons. Watch how far I am away from the basement and watch me get into the basement um, because of the persona build. So that's another advantage of the persona build that I'm using. That increased movement speed really helps you in the beginning of the game where you can down somebody, hold them, and get to another part of the map and keep hitting people. Or when you actually down somebody in the game, um, it'll help you get to more riskier rocket chairs. Not all rocket chairs are equal. Some are harder for survivors to do rescues. So that al allows a lot of flexibility and, and it is one of the reasons why we use it in a lot of our builds. Now, one of the most important things that I really want to cover is what you should be using in terms of your trait. I personally recommend using Blink all the time. There'll be some people who think that, you know, you can use Teleport. The thing is, is that you should really know the strengths and weaknesses of each map. So Teleport's not really worth it. Furthermore, if you use Teleport in Photo World, they can still see it in the real world. So when you go against top players, people who can really cut you, Blink is going to be your ability to really finish off that hit. And so you're going to see me really be able to use Blink on more of a professional level to get these hits that I normally wouldn't be able to get. In a game where decoding happens so fast, I'm telling you that Blink is going to be needed. We have tried excitement, we've done peepers, we've done everything. And at the end of the day, if you're going against a really experienced perfumer, it's going to drive you nuts when you don't have Blink. Because that's the difference between downing somebody in 20 seconds of the exchange versus downing them a minute and a half because you allowed them to relocate. All right, so that's why I recommend Blink all the time. It's your job to get that finishing hit, especially if you love tap everybody in the beginning and everybody's a one shot. That Blink is really going to make people like the Seer, the Perfumer, the Forward really easy to finish off, especially since they're kiters. And I just want to emphasize that when you're playing top tier players, I mean, the people are getting really good at kiting in this game. Perfumer is borderline overpowered, Seer can be a little bit of annoyance. Um, so you really need to down people ASAP. So if you're playing against top players, you're going to need Blink. He doesn't really have a gap closer other than his second skill. However, the second skill takes incredible skill to use. And furthermore, um, you also want to down somebody as fast as possible. You know, if somebody is able to cut you an extra 30 seconds because you didn't have Blink, that's 30 seconds too long. You need to down people ASAP in this game. You do not have time to be dilly-dallying. In cases like this clip that you're seeing, once you can master your second skill, you can also use it in conjunction with Blink. And trust me, with some of these players, you're really going to need that to get them down. So, again, this is just me kind of showing you a surprise attack, me kind of really getting down my second, uh, my first skill. To, uh, and, and in that case, because I damaged the coordinator, I didn't get the Terra Shock, right? Um, and this is something that you really just have to keep practicing, uh, get down that skill, and just swing aimlessly as you can. Um, it's very important. And this is what makes the photographer very, very um, dangerous, especially when used correctly. Um, like I said, one of the main tactics is um, one of the main tactics is really practicing with different persona builds, practicing uh, different variations of the map. So look at the look at the corner, right? So now you see that my east persona is now activating. Okay, so the magician is highlighted. I see that the magician is right over here. Now what's interesting about this is that the magician can't use his illusion. Watch what he does. He uses his illusion, but I have eyesight on him at all times. And, well, you'll see that eventually. This lasts for about 25 seconds. So I'm just really going over the persona build again. So watch him use his illusion. He's still highlighted the entire time. So this is actually an anti-mage build. And uh, it drives people like Yo Mama, the user, crazy. And, again, this is why I use uh, Blink. He's going to use that. I still have him. And that's the difference between him being able to kite for an extra 20 seconds versus not being able to kite. And in this game, you got to get them down as fast as possible. So to highlight real quick before I start talking about this photo, um, you really have three methods. Um, I kind of only go over two. 
because I don't really like the love tap method where you just run around trying to hit everybody once. I know it's viable, but I mean, really, you need to down people fast in this game. So anyways, you have method one where you get the Terra Shocks. You get method two where you do the love tap and you kind of intermingle it with being able to take somebody in the rocket chair um, across the map. Or rather, in the balloons, go across the map with your increase in speed bonus. And then you have method three where you can just love tap everybody at least once so everybody is a one shot for the rest of the game. Again, I don't really like doing method three. That's why I'm not including it. It's a theoretical or rather a hypothetical uh, move that you can do. Most of the time you're doing tactic one or two. Um, you know, if you see somebody, you can just love tap them once. I want to talk about this picture though. So uh, a user named Fangle gave me this photo. And I really, really want to thank you for, for dedicating your time to making this. It's extremely impressive. And I actually bragged about it to my staff channel showing, look at this, look how great this work is. And again, um, if people do artwork for me, I try to incorporate it into all my videos. It's important that, you know, I show appreciation. One of the biggest questions I'm asked is if I ever get big, if I ever get to 100, 200,000 subs, will I ever change? Absolutely not. I'm on Discord every night, every day, talking to the users on voice chat. Um, I also extend my occupational therapy practitioner services on there for pro bono. I know not everybody has the same equal access to, uh, to people in the medical and holistic field. So, you know, I really do give back to my users as much as I can. I try to do everything for free as well. It's important that that's how the world works when, when we can afford to. And especially when you give me something like this, something that you spend so much time and energy into, I mean, it's such a powerful thing. You know, I'm just this guy that kind of sits at home a lot and plays video games and does stupid videos. And then, you know, I work in the field that I work in. And to be reminded that there are people in this world who, who dig you, who dig your style, who just like your personality. You know, there have been many moments in my life where I felt like I was nothing when I was younger. And so to feel this sort of validation is something that I really wish I would have told my younger self, you know, one day this is what you're capable of, but I can't do that. So what I can do is allow the younger fans, especially the younger player base, to know that one day you're going to have this sort of power as well. And you actually have it now. It's not my job to convince you you have that power now because it's not my position in this world to... to uh, Act as if I'm more enlightened than you, but I promise you that when you do realize it, you'll do great things. And that's no one's position other than your own to figure that out on your own time when it's applicable. And I want you to know that I'll be there every step of the way. And I really hope to be part of that process for you to evolve into this sort of Pokemon that just crushes the competition <laughs> and does so many great things and really makes a difference in this world. You have that power. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Please let me know how you feel about this photographer guide. We got some more things coming out soon. Take care.